Good morning and welcome to the Imperial 2015 Spring Summer Seasonal Show. We're excited that you've taken the time to be with us over the next couple of days to discuss non-food opportunities that can help to differentiate your stores from your competitors. Together, we'll walk the aisles to review displays that will drive value and will support the major promotional events marketed by our top health and wellness suppliers. We'll see opportunities to tie in general merchandise into those food-related events of spring right through Labor Day. And we'll see the innovation of new items that will target consumers <coughs> that shop in your stores. To begin our event, we've invited one of the most experienced industry leaders to share with us the state of the supermarket industry and to provide for us a glimpse of how retailers throughout the country are winning as they compete with big box stores, mass merchants, chain drug, and the emerging online channel of internet retailing. Peter Larkin has had a long and distinguished career managing government relations with big companies, uh, including Kroger, Philip Morris, and FMI, the Food Marketing Institute. In 2010, Peter was named President and CEO of the National Grocers Association, the national trade association that represents and is a tremendous resource to the independent grocer in the food industry. For those of you who have attended the NGA show that typically takes place in February, I'm sure you will agree. With Peter at the helm, the NGA organization and its show is the place where independents gather to learn about the industry and the future of food <coughs> retailing. Imperial is very proud to introduce to you our good friend, Mr. Peter Larkin. Thank you, Tony, and uh, good morning. Uh, how's this volume? It's hard to tell from here. Does it sound okay? Good in the back? Great. Uh, it is a pleasure to be here with you today. Uh, thanks to Imperial for inviting me. Um, I accept every opportunity that I can to talk to people in our industry. Um, and what I'm going to do today is talk a little bit, very, very little bit about NGA just to set the stage. 25 years ago, Chris Flynn, my good friend and colleague, runs the Massachusetts Food Association. will remember this well, I think. Um, I was relatively new as the Vice President of State Government Relations and Environmental Affairs at the Food Marketing Institute. And at the time, this is, you know, 1989, 1990, and you may recall that recycling and solid waste and environmental issues were very uh, front and center and important to the supermarket industry at the time. And particularly in New England, there was a lot of state legislation about recycling and various other issues, and we decided to put together a meeting of all of the state associations uh, in New England, bring some experts in and talk about how the food industry was going to respond. And uh, I thought of this when I was in, uh, entering town, but that meeting 25 years ago was right here in Worcester. Um, so, uh, you know, I have a history here, glad to be back. Um, and I am, oh, there we go. <coughs> were, you, were you doing that? Or I did. I, no? Oh, you got it? I got it. Awesome. Thank you very, very much. Sorry about that. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit about uh, NGA, the economic impact of the independent grocery channel. And then I want to spend some time talking about industry trends. And this is where you come in, because I'm going to leave some time for questions and answers at the end. And I'm going to present a lot of information. But frankly, you're the ones who are, you know, where the rubber hits the road. You're out there doing this on a daily basis. I want you to listen to those, and during the Q&A, if you want to challenge any of them, if you want to 
respond to any of the things you see, uh, I would welcome that and ho hopefully we'll have some time to have a little discussion about these things. So let's get started. Uh, just basically, as Tony already said, NGA is a national trade association. We do represent the independent grocer, the wholesalers that serve them, and of course we have suppliers as, member, as members as well. We're based in Washington, D.C., and our mission is to ensure that the independent community-focused retailers and wholesalers have the opportunity to succeed in the marketplace. In our work, I like to call a full service trade association, meaning and the reason we are based outside of Washington, D.C. is the primary reason that members belong to NGA is our government relations and legal advocacy for the industry. Uh, we have a full complement of people and outside resources and law firms that basically become the voice of the independent grocery channel in Washington, D.C. But we also have uh, programs and communications and education and research, industry relations. As a matter of fact, I'll be flying to Chicago later today. And Thursday and Friday, this week, we have uh, what we call our trading partner business sessions, where we're bringing retailers, wholesalers, and suppliers together. We have 330 individual one-on-one -on -one meetings scheduled over that two-day period. We do a lot of industry relations and then also <coughs> provide a lot of services uh, for our members. When I first joined NGA, uh, one of the obvious questions that people would ask me, okay, you're now representing an independent channel, but how much of the supermarket industry is that? You know, and, and frankly, if you look at the trade press, you've got very different you know, ways of measuring that and answering it. So what I wanted to do was have some statistics, have some answers so I could answer that question. And we went out with the help of some of our suppliers and friends. Um, I the Shelby Report, Griffin Report is here. They were one of the major supporters of this project. We went out and hired a New York City-based economic research firm and measured the size of the independent channel. You see some of the uh, metrics up here, but I want to show you a short video because I think this says it better than I ever could. I don't know about you, but when I first saw those numbers, I was very uh, pleased, I was very impressed, and I'm very proud to be representing a channel of the supermarket industry that makes up, as you saw from those numbers, 25% of the supermarket industry in the United States. <clears throat> I want to share one other thing about this. You saw um, that uh, at the end it says www.coachesimpactamerica. We decided not to have some printed, published report that would sit on a shelf that nobody would use. We decided to deliver this information in the economic impact study via the website 
and I encourage you to go there because it's fascinating and I think very user friendly. When you go to the homepage, you'll see a map of the United States with a lot of these metrics listed on the right hand side. But if you're interested in what is the economic impact of the independent channel of Massachusetts, you can just click on the state of Massachusetts in the map and the numbers will populate for just the state. If you're interested in Congressional District 1 in Massachusetts, you can click on that, or State Legislative District 32. So it's a way for you to use it that makes it more relevant to you and your community. So we're finding that a lot of our members are using it for two reasons. One, when they have visits with their legislators, so they can talk about the economic impact in the district. And then secondly, frankly, a lot of our suppliers who had no idea that the independent channel was responsible for $130 billion of sales. Um, and that's a very important message to get out there. We're glad that we finally have the numbers to do that. Just a couple of other things about NGA and then I'll move on to the trends section. Um, but Tony did mention our show. The next show will be in Las Vegas at the Mirage, uh, February 8 to 11. If, I know many of you have gone. We hope to see you back. We have grown the show. It's, it's now over 3,000 of your best friends and colleagues from around the country uh, that come and attend. The retailer, uh, wholesaler audience continues to grow, primarily not only because of our large and sold out show floor for the last several years, but most importantly, because we have anywhere from 30 to 40 separate educational workshops that are the reason that most of our retailers and wholesalers come. It's a great opportunity to learn about what's new, what's happening in the marketplace, and I encourage you to come. Registration is now open. You just go to our website, and it's a couple of clicks away. So hope to see you there. In addition, we also have a webinar every Wednesday on an interesting uh, topic um, in the industry. We have a very robust, for those of you who are retailers and are looking for a way for basic training of your store employees, I really encourage you to take a look at our online training offering. Very reasonably priced, very robust. It's offered in many languages, over 100 courses. Please check it out when you have the time. We've also spent the last four years really working with some of our technology experts in the industry in trying to help independents address some of these challenges they have in dealing with new technologies in the marketplace. A lot of our members don't have large IT departments that they can fall back on to get this information and we're trying to, to deliver some of those services. And some of my trend slides will see why that is so important. And then also we have been very aggressive in expanding the number of peer groups that we offer for our members. As a matter of fact, also in Chicago this week, we have a couple of our share groups that are meeting, but they range from finance to IT to operations to human resources, <coughs> companies that are running ESOPs. We have a large number of them and the demand keeps growing. So NGA is a place for the independent channel to get together um, and share. Let's talk about what I'm really here for, and I'm going to, in this section, run through a bunch of slides some trends, some information that comes out of research that NGA does, some research that other organizations like uh, Price Waterhouse, Nielsen, uh, it's uh, GMDC, a conglomeration of different sources that piece together some of these trends that I want to discuss with you. The first is every year we do a survey of the economic uh, factors, the the kind of the benchmark study. We've been doing this for years with our partners at FMS, and we look at the basics, and I've just given you a couple of highlights here. This was just released a couple of weeks ago at our financial management conference. But as you'll see in 2013, you know, net profits were down just a bit. Sales grew a little bit, and I'm going to talk about the challenges that the industry is currently facing. I probably don't need to tell all of you about it. But frankly, this industry is facing a lot of challenges. So those for the independent channel, um, and we survey across the country, if you actually look at the report, you'll see this broken out by region, so you get a sense of broken out by store size. We get a great response to this survey. So sales were up, gross margins, you know, 26, I believe that is slightly down from last year. And when we ask what is the biggest concern, what is the biggest cost driver in your business, 
you'll see that health care is number one, and I think that's going to be on all of our minds, regardless of what business segment you are in uh, over the next several years. Uh, so uh, if you're interested in all of the metrics, uh, I encourage you to take a look at the full survey. Uh, but it is challenging, and you know, I don't know about you, but I don't see that challenge, you know, going away anytime soon. I'll talk a little bit more about that with some of the other slides. Health and wellness. I know, particularly because of the business that you do, with, excuse me, with Imperial, the health and wellness is a key part uh, of any supermarket's offering these days. If you're not focused in on the health and wellness customer. Uh, then I think you're missing the boat because statistics, our numbers show that more and more and more people are concerned about their health and are really looking when they're shopping in the grocery store, they want to see solutions, they want to see products that can help them address uh, their needs. I thought this was very interesting though, that the top source of information when consumers are looking for information on health and wellness is the internet, by, as you can see, quite a large margin. Um, that could be a good thing. It can also be a little bit scary when you think about it because just because it's on the internet doesn't mean it's true. Uh, magazines, nutritionists and dietitians are uh, right ahead of grocery stores in providing information. But what we're seeing with a lot of our members is that they are trying to solve that problem by bringing nutritionists and dietitians into their company and into their stores. Have a pharmacy and store is somewhat important, um, but that number seems to be increasing. And that is a challenge for some independents. Some do it very well, uh, but I think that that's a, something that a lot of them are having to or are wrestling with. 20.5% uh, say dietitians are a very, are very or somewhat important. And I thought it was interesting that Hispanics, African Americans, and those under 21 are particularly interested uh, in seeing uh, a dietitian and having someone help them figure out through all of the claims that are made, what should I be doing to maintain my health and my wellness? Um, this is some interesting information that I gleaned from GMBC, and I know a number of you work with GMBC, um, but what this basically says is that there are certain core customers that are going to spend a lot when it comes to buying health and wellness products. But the underlying message here is that everybody is spending money. Everybody is really concerned about health and wellness. Um, and this gives, this gives you a little bit of a glimpse into that, a, a glimpse into that uh, in that what those entry categories, uh, you know, to be able to have that health and wellness message, obviously food and beverage, vitamins and supplements, OTCs, natural children's hygiene and toiletries, natural hair and skin care, and books and magazines. I know you'll probably all be looking at products over the next couple of days that will address this uh, directly, but I think the most important thing is if you really, we're gonna talk about this a little more too, if you understand who your core customer is that is looking for these products, and your ability to be sophisticated enough to be able to know who they are when, when they're in your store is really going to be key. And technology may help you do that. Speaking of which, a recent study of our industry, both retail and supply side, if you ask the senior executives in our industry, they said technology is the single most disruptive force uh, facing our industry today and wrapping our minds around what this all means is an incredibly important thing for all of us in this industry to understand. It's why I said that NGA is trying to address some of these technology needs of our specific members, the independent channel. Um, and this is something I do not need to tell you. But this is the biggest game changer you know, that I think any of us have ever seen in terms of the way people get information, how they're shopping, how they're basically connecting uh, with you. And if you are not looking at how to use technology, uh, I, I was just in Atlanta for a very interesting 
presentation from one of our partner companies that had been involved with Apple on the release of the iPhone. And their, their, their part of this equation was really the security of the technology that will be used for mobile payments. Um, and I was fascinated to understand kind of the advances that had been made. You know, we all hear about cybersecurity. But I think with the new iPhone 6 and some of the technology that they're bringing to the table, um, you're going to see a fairly rapid adoption uh, of mobile payments. Unfortunately, and I hope there's no one from MasterCard, Visa, or American Express here. If so, my apologies. But unfortunately, the iPhone product is going to ride on those same Visa, MasterCard rails, uh, which means that we don't have any relief from the ridiculous interchange fees that we have been paying over the NGA is directly involved in legal action to try to correct that situation. Uh, big data, scalability, affordability, we hear a lot about big data, but unfortunately right now, I think the independent channel is struggling with how do we aggregate enough information to be able to use it, A, to be, to be able to inform us about who is shopping in our stores, what are their needs, to communicate with them directly, we're making strides, but we're not there yet. We can't compare to what, let's say, Kroger can do with their Doug Pumpy approach to analyzing and knowing every single consumer that walks in their store um, and how that person is shopping the store. We have some catch up to do, but we're going to have to get there um, if we want to remain competitive. A lot of our members are looking at how am I going to deal with uh, online? How am I going to? Our members are not going to be Amazon, don't want to be, you know, we're not, but we understand that some consumers want to be able to shop online. Some of them want to come and pick up their products at the store. Some of them want to have, have them delivered to their home. And if you're a retailer and you're not understanding which of your consumers want that, then I think you're going to be left in the dust. So a lot of our members are looking at these various different opportunities and how they can address them. Um, in their marketplace. Uh, this was a little sobering. We did some research with Progressive Grocer. Uh, only 9% of single stores uh, have a mobile app. Um, we're working to change that. 13% of single stores, 58% of multi-stores offer digital coupons, and 62% of single stores, uh, and 65% of, of multi-stores have no loyalty program. Now, loyalty programs in the past may have been responsible for that because they really, I don't think, were very effective. But the new style, using data in the right way to understand individual consumers, I think is going to change our industry's approach to loyalty. Consumer demographics. Uh, Americans' uh, disposable income is at an all-time low. 54% of Americans make less than $30,000 a year. Um, obviously, there is an income gap in this country. Um, how we deal with that politically is not a subject of this conversation, but you can't deny the facts, and it has had an impact on how people are shopping stores. Um, if any of you attended the FM on show uh, earlier this year, some of the research they presented really addressed this. You've got shoppers that are, you know, Whole Foods and specialty stores and going into a lot of your stores and have money to spend. And then we have this vast um, number of customers that are in this, you know, 30,000 or less, and they're really looking for almost on a day-to-day, week-to-week, how am I going to put food on the table? That, in my opinion, has changed our industry very dramatically. Uh, ethnic uh, marketing merchandising is a growth opportunity for certain if you understand how to do it. I'm going to show you some pictures in a minute about this. The ethnic population increasing 47% in the next 10 years. Hispanic and Asians growing rapidly. Um, and then, of course, those of us who baby boomers who are moving into new stages of our, our lives and the millennials. Eight 65 year olds will increase 7% to the percentage of U.S. population, and millennials making up 24%. You know this, I know it. We think differently, we shop differently, we 
we want to get information differently, and so you can't go to market the same way that we were going to market 10 years ago, 15 years ago. You have to be able to understand how to communicate, what kind of products these people want. Um, and I saw some, I, I don't think I have a slide about this. No, I don't. Uh, but just the difference um, in, if you look at seniors, or baby boomers for that matter, and the very specific things that they are looking for in terms of type size on labels and easy opening and single serve packaging. And you know, you've just got to dive in and understand how that could change what you're putting on the shelf um, and what those customers want to buy and how many of them you have in your particular marketplace. These um, next two slides are a little bit sobering, uh, but you know you can't avoid uh, reality here. These I've taken from uh, formerly Booz and Company, now Strategy, and, uh, and some of you have seen um, you know presentations from them, and I've pulled some of this out with their permission. Um, but hey, it's no secret that everybody in our business is really struggling to find real growth, like we have had in some years. Um, retail sales being driven by increasingly non-productive CPG deals and promotions. We could argue that day in and day out. This is their research, not NGA's research. I don't disagree with it, but I think that there's a lot of room to discuss that. Economics are weak and projected to remain so. Channel fragmentation continues, and digital technology is certainly positioned, as I said earlier, to transform our industry. How, when, what impact Amazon is going to have online, offline, mobile apps. We're all learning as we go, but I don't think there's any denying that digital is changing our industry dramatically. This is also from uh, Strategy Ad. Um, this is their kind of analysis. We talked about fragmentation. Well, here it is in living black and white. Uh, Walmart is not growing like it, it was. Um, I don't think that's any secret. Although there are places right now in the south where they're putting up neighborhood stores left and right. Uh, I have one of my members that is facing 24 new Walmart neighborhood stores just in their 70 store uh, marketplace. Uh, large tier uh, grocery, several banners are clearly poised for success. If you look at what Grover is doing in the marketplace, you, know, you can't argue with the numbers they've had quarter after quarter after quarter of success. Uh, some of the others, it gets, remains to be seen how the Safeway Albertson deal is going to work out. Uh, but the large tier grocery, there are opportunities, but challenges as well. Medium tier, we all know some key regional players, a lot of our members that are doing uh, quite well and growing, but competition is, is uh, intensifying for all of us. The next one, you know, for the independent grocery channel, it's really about differentiating. How can you stand out? How are you different in your marketplace? And I'll show you a few examples uh, in just a minute. Um, dollar growth continues, but at a slower pace. And I think that that is evidenced by what we're seeing with this battle between family dollar, dollar general, and dollar tree in terms of who's going to you know, absorb whom. Um, and I don't know if you've seen if, if dollar general uh, is the is successful in their take hospital takeover? They're already talking about selling 700, you know, of their locations. So this massive proliferation of dollar. I don't know, maybe we have some dollar folks in the room. Um, you can challenge me or ask me a question about it. But I see where I, I think there's going to be a shakeout in that market. But there's certainly still opportunities for growth there. Some of the heavy discounts like Aldi and Winco or you know, booming, uh, some softening in the drug channel, and as I said several times, digital, whatever form it's, it, it, it's going to take, uh, can certainly erode from the traditional uh, brick and mortar. Um, I'm just going to run through a couple of pictures because I could go around the country and show you some of our members and our retailers that are doing extremely well in the marketplace. And I didn't you know, focus it on, you know, Eastern United States or New England. 
I can, some of these examples are outside of your marketplace, uh, but I certainly, you know, if we look at metropolitan markets in Seattle, we can all come up with three or four similar examples of stores that are operating closer to home. But that specialty upscale, <coughs> sort of the competition for the, um, you know, whole food shopper uh, are certainly doing well in a lot of our markets. Um, and this isn't anything specific about a store, but obviously the independent is going to win in the market because of service. What you see here is a picture of uh, Andrew Hadlock. Every year at our convention, we put on the National Best Bagger Championship. We have uh, competitors from all over the United States. Uh, Massachusetts Food Association has their own bag, uh, bagging <coughs> championship. And they will send that person to Las Vegas. So they'll compete against about 30 others. The winner every year goes on the Letterman Show. They win $10,000. They come to Washington and bag against their member of Congress. It's a big deal. It's a big competition. But what this slide represents is that those people, your front line, dealing with a customer every day, are one of the key differentiators for the independent brochure. Um, fresh organic, uh, left is a picture of one of our members. If you've never been to the Newport, Newport Avenue Market in Bend, Oregon, uh, it's a place to go, it's worth a look-see. Uh, not only because you get to go to Bend, Oregon, which is a beautiful place, but it's a very interesting store. Hook store operator, and they are a phenomenal uh, grocery store. Um, and then a different type of format, the Super King Markets in Los Angeles, uh, also focusing fresh, 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 organic, organic, organic. Uh, ethnic. Um, I chose Northgate. We could have a lot of examples of this. Anybody in the room ever been in a Northgate Gonzalez market in Southern California or Arizona? <coughs> the next time you are in the neighborhood, I strongly recommend uh, that you go. Um, it is um, a different, I mean, it is focused clearly on the Hispanic shopper, but it's interesting. They've been in business now for probably 35 years. They are now attracting non-Hispanic customers because of the way they go to market. I mean, you will see a, a 100, 200 feet, you know, meat cases. Uh, it is an amazing place, the produce sections. I have taken people in there that have never seen a market like that. They are not Hispanic, and they said, I wish we had a store like this in our community. And they are growing like crazy. Um, very, very interesting uh, market. Um, obviously, local um, is another good way to differentiate, and in my humble opinion, since I represent the independent brochure, Nobody can do this better than us. Um, on the left, you see Metcalf's markets in Madison, uh, and these supermarkets in Louisiana. Um, we have, I could put up a thousand pictures of how independent grocers are using local and talking about it. It's not just putting the product out there, but it's how you communicate the message to the shoppers. And these folks are doing it extremely well. And then, of course, because of the economics that I talked about, a lot of our members are moving into the price impact stores. Um, this is the Wakeburn, um, you know, example. Um, but obviously, you've got Save a Lot, and I mentioned Aldi, and a number of our members, uh, particularly in some smaller communities, are converting from more traditional grocery into more of a price uh, impact model. And then, of course, while you're here, you're going to have an opportunity to look at how you differentiate. And I think through the show, uh, the seasonal show, and then I understand you have an opportunity to go through the Innovation Center. This is an opportunity for you to find out how within those categories you can differentiate yourself in the marketplace. So with that, um, I would love to open it up to see if you have any questions, challenge anything that I've said, delve into it in more you know, detail, uh, but again, uh, a pleasure being here with you today um, and look forward to those of you who are members of NGA, seeing you at our various events. Uh, if you're not, uh, I encourage you to come to the 
show in February to get a good overall look at who we are and what we do because I think we can help. Are there questions? Are there any uh, questions at this time for Peter? You okay. You well, them. thank you again. <laughs> Peter, thanks very much for giving us that uh, the very insightful presentation into the industry and the trends. For the folks in the room, uh, the show floor is now open. We can proceed down the, uh, the hall to the registration desk where you're able to pick up your cipher units and then head on to the show floor. Thanks very much for being with us this morning.